the winter months give the photographer the wonderful opportunity to photograph our landscapes in an entirely different way. The sun, of course, is now much lower in the sky, but there's also the prospect of overnight frosts, creating fascinating patterns, particularly close-ups of leaves, for example, as part of our landscape. So I donned my walking boots and headed off into the muddy Surrey footpaths. We've had a lot of rain recently, incidentally. Armed only with the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II plus my trusty 12 to 100 Pro lens. By the way, if you haven't done this already, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. I live high up on the North Downs, part of the Surrey Hills area of outstanding natural beauty, but rain had made our paths very mucky. I soldiered on through woodland to Gravelly Hill, which has extensive views over the Weald. There was still a touch of moisture in the air. Normally you will see planes landing at Gatwick, and further afield are the South Downs, but not today, so photography was confined to nearer views, in fact very near. Close at hand you cannot see the moisture that is impairing the distant views, but it can make a striking change to dense woodland scenes. With a bit of careful positioning it is possible to capture angel rays penetrating into the woods. Also, mask the sun behind a tree to reduce the risk of flare, which is easy to judge with an electronic finder. The 12-100 Pro lens, although immensely versatile, is not cut out for macro photography, for which you would probably need one of the Olympus dedicated macro lenses. You can get in quite close, but depth of field becomes a critical issue. Depth of field is controlled by aperture choice and focal length of lens, but when the photographer gets in close, depth of field is reduced to a narrow plane regardless of other settings, but they still work, but less effectively. This is demonstrated here. Even at f11 you would expect a generous depth of field, but this has been reduced by zooming in to 100 millimeters, that is 200 in film, and therefore what should be sharp is not. Images on a flat plane are easier, but anything behind or in front of the subject will be unsharp. The more you can give photography, the more you get back. Practice makes perfect, my music teacher kept saying to me, and the same applies here with photography. At Gravelly Hill I joined the North Downs Way, which is heavily wooded, increasing dramatically the dynamic range of the image. Leaving HDR aside, I spot meter a highlight, allowing shadows to become much darker, which are then corrected in post-production, usually Lightroom. I then took a second image on ESP, and as expected, the highlights are overexposed, but not beyond correction in Lightroom. Technology moves on at such a pace that at times it is difficult to keep up. In my quest searching for images that look their best in the current lighting, I discovered some interesting variations from patterns on sawn logs, and then shadows on tarmac, and frosted leaves. It was an interesting exercise, but next time I will be a little more careful about depth of field and use a macro lens for close-ups.